Hey, with that, uh, well, good evening, members of council. Uh, welcome to this special committee uh, meeting, uh, committee of the whole meeting, uh, Wednesday, June the 23rd. And uh, I will start by calling the meeting to order. So uh, it is uh, approval of the agenda, a special committee of the whole agenda, June 23, 2021. The recommended action is that the special committee of the whole agenda for June 23, 2021 be approved as presented. A mover and a seconder. Councillor LaRose and Councillor Cummings, all in favor? On the queue, that's carried. Uh, if anyone has a declaration of pecuniary interest, uh, they may so do or declare at the appropriate time. Uh, moving on to uh, items of reference. Uh, I then will pass this meeting on, being that is a planning uh, issue. Uh, I will pass it on to Councillor Levy, the Chair of Planning. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Councillor Vadavancourt has agreed to chair this uh, portion of the meeting, so I'll hand this over to Councillor Vadavancourt. Okay, so Councillor Vadavancourt, if you would uh, take over. Thank you. Thank you, Worship, uh, Madam Chair. Um, so we're looking at the uh, section 3A of the agenda items of reference. The first item is the draft secondary plan, um, secondary and master plan. Uh, the second item is the town doc secondary plan and master plan next steps media release. And the third item is public comments, town doc secondary and master plan. So we'll go through each of those items in order and I'll ask the, um, the director of planning, if she has any comments on item one, which is the draft secondary and uh, master plan at this point. Thank you very much, Councillor Vadabankur. Uh, the, the items were placed on the agenda really so that council could go back and the public could go back and, and see some of the documentation easily uh, reference the, the, sec, the draft secondary plan. You may recall that that draft secondary plan and master plan was presented uh, to first committee of the whole on May 12th and then a, as a statutory public meeting on May 26th. Um, so that's, that document has been unchanged since those meetings. Uh, the second bit, the uh, media release. Oh, I'm sorry, I think I wanted to go through those indiv individually. So I'll stop there. Okay, thank you. Any, any questions of the director on the, on the first item? Seeing none, we'll pass it back to you. Andrea. Thank you very much. Uh, the second item I think is we wanted to provide as well to council as we were seeing some feedback, um, social media, taking some calls and emails with some concerns about um, how fast this project may have been moving, some of the consultation we'd done, some of the decisions, concerns that decisions had been made. So we really wanted to ensure that the public was aware that you know this is an important document uh, for all of us. And I know uh, in working with Sajeki, our intention is to make sure we get it right for the town and for the, the residents of the town. So uh, by no means is this intended to rush or, or go through some of the really critical decisions that I think still need to be made, uh, which is leading to tonight's uh, workshop with council. Thank you. Any questions of the uh, director on the media release? Thank you, we'll move on to item three, which is a public comments. And there are numerous emails attached with the, with the agenda from various um, interested parties uh, with respect to the review of the um, town doc secondary plan. Uh, Madam Director, did you wanna comment on any of the co comments received? Yeah, thank you very much. So I wanted to make sure that we did have some of those written comments that had been received either just before uh, the public meeting or after the public meeting, council had an opportunity to have access to them. Um, so those were some documents that you may have seen, but I think for the most part, you hadn't seen a lot of those, those comments that we'd received after the public meeting. So wanted to ensure that you had an opportunity to see those as well as, uh, and, you know, we have the Connect Penetanguishing website where there's been some activity too that all will be captured and, and reported onto council. So sharing that information for, for you and for reference. I would also note um, we've, we've had some follow-up uh, with some residents or some stakeholders since the public consultation uh, around some of the concerns. So I think uh, we may touch on that further on in the meeting. Thank you, Madam Director. Any uh, questions or comments of the director? pertaining to the public comments received. 
Thank you. I have one. It just has to do with um, those that may be watching tonight's meeting and maybe are just becoming aware of what uh, council has embarked on. Are we still accepting comments from members of the public with respect to this process? Yes, we are still accepting comments and we uh, intend to accept some comments uh, throughout the summer. I think uh, we are going to try and do some more engagement with the public over the summer months. Um, so there is opportunity in the future, um, either through the website or you can email uh, myself directly with any comments. Thank you. Any further questions or comments on this portion of the agenda? Okay, seeing none, we're gonna move on to the council workshop portion. And we have our consultants here uh, this evening that are going to lead the workshop. We have um, David Sajeki, um, Dylan, and the rest of the team. So at this point, I'm gonna turn it over to uh, David and I think he's going to uh, conduct the workshop. David? Uh yeah, thank you very much, Councillor uh, Um I believe Dylan is going to share his screen and we're going to pull up a presentation. And a Andrea um, sort of said it and alluded to it as well, too. I mean, the purpose of tonight is really to, to, to receive your input and we'll be revisiting the, the plan, the draft plan and um, incorporating what we what we hear tonight. So we'll be taking notes in real time, um, which you'll see coming up on the screen, and uh, we'll then take that back and 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 uh, look at what what edits make make sense to the plans. So um, Dylan, perhaps you could turn to the next slide, please. Uh, this is just a. a usual slide that we have at the beginning of the session, just saying that the session is being streamed and will be recorded. Uh, a reminder, it's, it's a bit more casual tonight than a, a typical public meeting, but to please mute yourself unless you're speaking. Um, and feel free to share your feedback either verbally or by typing your comment using the chat function. Um, and if you're experiencing technical difficulties, please message Sarah Marshall either directly through the chat function or by email at smarshall at penetanguishing.ca. Next slide, please. We already went through introductions, so I don't think, and I, I think most of us know each other, so I, I don't think we need to do that tonight. But in terms of the secondary plan, um, why is it needed? It was identified in the 2019 to 2023 Community Strategic Plan as an area of particular importance and requiring further study. We know that investment um, is happening in the area and is needed, that there is a community desire to revitalize the town dock. And the purpose of the secondary plan and master plan is really to develop the vision for the town dock, um, as well as to identify the permissions that will, it won't develop exactly as is shown, but it will provide the guidance and the direction around um, the types of uses, the types of built form and the, the public space that is down there as well. So next slide, please, Dylan. Uh, the purpose of the workshop tonight is to seek guidance from council, as well as the, the members from the technical advisory committee who are on the meeting, who are at the meeting to, to really provide us and, and we hope to establish that shared vision for the future of the town dock that we can take away um, and use it as direction into the plan. Um, so really it's about, uh, we know we haven't yet touched on or hit a plan that that uh, we have full buy-in behind. So the idea today is is to really hear about where we, where some of those changes would like to be seen. Um, next slide, please. And this is just for the agenda. Um, we've already done introductions. In terms of the item number two, that's key discussion points. So right off the bat, um, there are a number of key discussion points that we just want to raise and make sure that we are all on the same page because they, they are critical um, for determining the direction of the study itself. Uh, we want to look at, at the vision statement and ensure that what is up there still resonates um, with council and, and the TAC. Uh, we want to understand what are the elements that are really key to incorporate into the plan. And then we have a discussion around phasing. So we primarily focus on phase one and phase two and we have an hour, so it's a lot to pack in, but at the end of the hour, we'll just um, uh, move on to conclusions and next steps. Uh, next slide, please, Dylan. 
Um, and next slide. So in terms of the key discussion points, uh, again, we will be taking, I, Dylan may have to exit full screen for this, but we will be taking notes um, in, in real time as we go through this. Um, but there are, I, I guess, kind of five key points that we want to raise and make sure that we uh, do have the, the right understanding of each of them. And the first one is around the, the doc lunch agreement. So, I mean, our assumption, and I think this is, is relatively straightforward, is that um, that agreement will remain in place. Um, that includes, although this will be one of the questions that we get, that we get to uh, keeping the area for the boat launch, as well as the access and restaurant location. Um, we do feel that there is an opportunity to revisit how access works to the site, um, as long as the access is still provided there uh, for the dock lunch. Um, and in addition to that too, there are impacts in terms of the area spaces at which likely results in moving parking to the north. Um, then, and we will go through these items one by one, but the next item is the urban beach. Um, the question that we will be posing to, to, to um, the group is whether or not the urban beach should be removed from that phase three um, plan. Uh, third question is to do with the boat launch. And the question is, we just want to put it out there, whether or not we should be considering in the plan that the boat launch is indeed remaining um, for the entirety of the study. Uh, the fourth is parking. And one of the questions that we wanted to uh, phrase directly with parking is, is where can we accommodate long-term truck and trailer parking? And the, um, the next point, uh, and, and I guess the final point other than other is around the Tourist Information Center. So we are of the opinion that we know the Tourist Information Center is going to be renovated. We think it's an opportunity for, um, uh, for, for the center to move to a new location rather than investing the money um, in the existing location. We wanna bring that up for input as well, um, both from council and from the TAC committee. And well, there's also an opportunity for other, which is an opportunity to bring forward additional items. Um, so we can start with the dock lunch agreement. Um, again, our understanding is that that agreement will be respected, but that there is some opportunity um, around, uh, around access. Um, so I'll turn that over if there are any comments that that people wish to wish to raise on that. Perhaps Andrea can give us an update on what uh, the actual agreement is with the dock lunch, David. Uh, yes. Sure. Thanks uh, for that question, Councillor Cummings. So the agreement itself um, was an agreement that was designed for when the town was doing a land swap uh, back in 1984. So the agreement largely covers that the land swap um, that the town and the and Nick entered into. The the two pieces that David alluded to, where the uh, land use is impacted and the master plan would be impacted, is that uh, the two pieces of land are owned that don't have public road frontage. And because they don't have public road frontage, the agreement specifies through survey work that there is a, a right of way access point to those two pieces of property that would continue to provide that public access and that road frontage for the purposes of the zoning bylaw. So that's the one piece that we think is going to stay, um, just maybe be tweaked about where the location, if there's a shift in the location of where that access is with updated surveys. The second piece is about um, the boat launch and a future hotel and parking. So it's an interesting clause that says the, the boat launch will stay with so many parking spaces until such time as a, a hotel is located on the property. Um, and so there's there's that that um, we you know we've, we've determined, I think through this project that the hotel is not an opportunity that's going to happen on the property. And so just tweaking what that boat launch uh, clause would look like. So again, it's largely going to be unchanged, probably just needs to be updated to reflect the, the new plans. I, 
Oh, sorry, there are requests to speak. So perhaps I have Councillor Levy and Councillor LaRose. Um, so perhaps we can go to Councillor Levy first and then um, Councillor LaRose next. Uh, thank you very much, David. Uh, further to Andrea uh, and, and the, the um, agreement with the, the Dorises on the dock lunch, uh, going back to 1984, am I correct? Uh, you have the history and writing there. I have some of it in memory. Uh, am I correct that uh, the Bedoris, Bedoris has accommodated us starting the boat launch ramp by doing this land swap where we were able to get his waterfront property for the launch ramp? Uh, that's, that's my first question on that. Sure, you know what, I, I believe Nick's on the call, so he's probably best to speak to it. I think what I know from the history is that there was a launch, but it wasn't in the in the best location. And so it was a bit of that swap. We exchanged lands where we had a, a launch for a better location for the launch, but I'm not sure if Nick's uh, able to speak to it or not. I'm, I'm not sure if, if, if Nick is on the line or able to speak. So, Councillor Levy, I'm not sure that answers your question, um, but perhaps we, we can... Uh, well, my, my question wasn't answered because Nick hasn't answered it and uh, Andrea hasn't answered it. So we'll yeah. leave that for another day, but I just, uh, I'm just curious about the history of the land swap and uh, how, what the land... It's, it's okay to say land swap, but... I think we kind of have to need uh, some of the legalities and the details about the land swap. It, not, not tonight, perhaps, but another time. Uh, <clears throat> Andrea, perhaps I might be able to shed a bit of light on that because back in 1984, I was actually involved with uh, the a uh, lot of the land swap because uh, we had uh, drawn up at that time new plans for a new dock lunch, and uh, that's when the uh, land swap was was done. Uh, as you know, back then, uh, Mr. Bedures owned the water rights right into the lake, and uh, and then he also had the, the lawn trap area, but he was limited to parking uh, in front of the dock lunch, so. He was granted parking spaces in front of the dock lunch and he was given a right of way along the side that road to access what would become a piece of landlocked property where that uh, uh, trailer sits today with, and, uh, and in exchange we ended up at the water rights and then the sidewalk that goes along there is now on prop town property. So that's all part of the land swap that took place in 1984. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I think, uh, think Councillor Rose had a question. Yeah, so we can move to Councillor Rose next, please. Thanks, guys. Uh, I was just wondering where you're seeing this agreement. I was not able to pull it up. So is, is it just me or where do I find that agreement? I think that's something we can absolutely share with council. I believe it was passed by bylaw. So I'm not sure if our bylaws go back that, that far on our website. Um, and so we can absolutely share the agreement itself and you can read the details, um, what it says. It's fairly short, I think about four or five pages of an agreement. Now, did you guys look at this before you started your plan? Uh, we did, yes. Oh, unless I'm not exactly sure, uh, David, if I could go or uh, since I'm chairing a portion of it, so I handed it over to you. So maybe I'll speak now if that's all right. I did see the deputy mayor uh, flash your card up. Is, uh, did the, does the deputy mayor want to go first? Thank you very much, Councillor Vadabankur. I was just wondering what size, uh, 
the property that is owned by the Badur's family, how big is that piece of property? You know, perhaps Dylan, could we go to um, uh, just an aerial photo of, of the site? That might be the easiest way to um, describe the, the property. And I think, I think Dylan, I think because you have control of it, I think you're the only one who can, that's perfect. If you can highlight with your cursor, um, the area that uh, is covered by the agreement, it'd be great. If I may ask one more question, was there any discussion during the deliberations to date of perhaps uh, trying to purchase that property from the Badur's family? Um, there have been discussions uh, internally uh, with the team about that being an option. Uh, I am unaware of any discussions that have been directly with the Baderas family, but Andrea may know um, further about that than, more about that than I do. Yeah, thanks. And so, no, we haven't. I mean, it's, it's put in the plan as being an action item, as David had said, that, um, you know, to really fully implement this plan that we should be looking at acquiring that land, but um, no decisions or, or further comment really have gone uh, on with the Badiris family. Thank and if I, can, if I can just make one comment to you that may help clarify the access question, Dylan, you're showing the, the existing properties, but perhaps you could show where in the plan, the one change that is identified is around the access. And, and um, you know, the plan is being reviewed, but where we are presently showing how that access would change. It's, it's significant because the parking all changes on the plan as well too. Yeah, so the, the property boundaries are actually these kind of two parcels here. And then this line that I drew up here is the current, roughly, this is not accurate at all, uh, but roughly the access from Main Street to the town, uh, the dock lunch. So what we were proposing is just um, changing that access to come from the other side so that it's more aligned with the proposed uh, parking area over here. So the access would just kind of shift from north to south, um, but that's an ongoing um, topic of, that we would check. Um, it's not settled at all. Yeah. Uh, my comment, uh, I have a couple of comments uh, with respect to this particular matter. I, th I think the, the agreement is worth uh, reviewing, um, certainly from 1984, but I, I would suggest we do it in the spirit of a partnership in that um, Mr. Berduras has been a long uh, standing uh, business in our community. The use that's existing there is a use that we'd like to see continue down at the town dock. Um, so from the standpoint in terms of negotiating a new agreement, I think that it would be prudent on our part to at least have or initiate those discussions, but in the spirit of a partnership to work with Mr. Maduras, in terms of trying to meet our mutual goals with respect to um, seeing the town dock redevelop, seeing his business um, continue to flourish. Uh, I understand he has certain legal non-conforming rights with respect to his proximity to the water's edge and all of those things, which makes it tricky when you want to relocate because all of a sudden then you're subject to some of these new restrictions. So there are a number of issues, I think, that um, need to be worked through. But I think if we approach it in the spirit, uh, we want to work together, we want to work with you, we want to look for opportunities for mutual success. I think that there is an opportunity there. And um, the agreement, um, it, is, it has stand the test of time, you know, since 1984. But I think that there are elements there that, um, given the direction we're going, I think could be updated and be more reflective of what uh, council's uh, future vision for the dock is. Just like in 1984, somebody uh, or members of council had a vision for what they thought the dock would look like. Well, now we have another vision emerging and maybe that could be incorporated um, in this new agreement. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Councillor uh, Vadabankar. And I see that Dylan, perhaps we can move back to the, the slide that shows the, the, the um, uh, points of discussion and I also see that Mayla Rowe has a question or not a question he has um, 
uh, comments. So I'll turn it over to him. Yeah, uh, I, I just uh, would uh, remark that uh, that uh, we look at the dock lunch uh, and, and the deputy mayor asked who what size property it was. Now, I know for fact, again, because I did most of the building on that whole thing, is uh, it's pretty well uh, property line to property line. But what we don't talk about and what we don't mention here, and, and as I indicated earlier, that we swap for the water rights alongside of the existing dock lunch. But what we don't look at, and when I haven't taken or discussed about, is the fact that Mr. Yeah. also owns another piece of property, and that's a piece of property that is south of the, of the launch launch and and uh, that was part of the agreement was making that little laneway uh, accessible uh, to that property so that it wasn't landlocked and at the same time uh, we don't make note of the fact that that piece of property that he owns there as well he has the water rights in that one so just just a point of interest to everyone um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Uh, David, I would suggest if there are no further comments, we may want to move to um, point number two on your key discussion point list. Yes. Um, so point number two is around the urban beach in phase three. And the question is, this is obviously um, a lot of discussion uh, with some pretty strong opinions on it. So the question that we're posing to Council and the TAC Committee um, is whether or not the urban beach should be removed from the plan. Members of council, um, any comments? Um, Mayor LaRue? Uh, I, for one, would say, I would recommend and suggest that the urban beach be removed. Um, I think it would be a very costly venture because we're looking at expanding out into the lake and at, at quite a depth. And at the same time, uh, causing uh, undue hardship to the property owners uh, to the east of that. So I, I think that I would not want to see this speech going forward. Okay. Dylan, can you just do one, one small task? Could you just perhaps exit the full screen so you're able to comment just as we hear the, thank you. So Mayor, Mayor LaRoe has just mentioned that the urban beach should be removed. In the plan. So I see a few cards, so I'll go in the order I saw them. So there's a deputy mayor, then Councillor Clue, and then Councillor Levy. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I would agree. I think it's a very costly item, and I would rather see us put our dollars into other things that uh, could make a big difference down there at the dock. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Madam Deputy Mayor. Uh, Councillor Clue. And then Councillor Levy. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I, I just want to applaud the consultants for the idea. I think it's it's really novel and I'd like to see the best parts of it uh, used potentially closer to the uh, wastewater treatment plant where we are considering some promenade or some kind of park space. I, I think taking the, the real, you know, fun elements from that urban beach and moving it down there so we get the, the best parts of it and obviously at a reduced cost for us. Thanks. Thank you, Councillor and Councillor Levy and I believe Councillor Mayotte is next. Oh, I think you're on mute, Councillor Levy. Mute, unmute. Uh, I agree it should be removed. If there is, as Councillor Clue says, an opportunity uh, farther down in the park uh, to enhance a small area, uh, I could support that. But uh, uh, notwithstanding that, we should just have that removed. Thank you. You're welcome, Councillor. Uh, Councillor Mayotte. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I totally agree to remove it from there. It'd be way too costly to put something there because of the depth of the water and the, the structure, but I, I agree, totally remove it from, the, from there. Thank you. Any other, any other comments on it? Uh, Councillor Cummings. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'm, I'm on the fence on this one only because I think there's a lot of work that has gone into this plan 
It is a 15 year plan. It's a lot of good forward thinking. And I think with any other capital project that we go through, if we know it's in the books, then we can save for it. And I think the beach is one of the items that's a drawing card to put people out on that dock. And if the beach is handled properly, it's not going to interfere with any of the residents that are to the right of that. <clears throat> so I would say that if, if you want to move forward on this, we might as well scrap the whole idea if we can't move forward on this particular project uh, with all its facets. We've got 10 years to think about phase three if we wanted to get that into that, um, into that plan. So I'm, I'm really kind of disappointed in hearing all this. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Cummings. Any other comments? Okay, well, I'll wait in. Um, so, uh, you know, I've been interested in this concept since day one. Um, you know, I, I echo Councillor Clue's comments. It was really innovative thinking. And I was trying to put it in context with not only the town dock, but the rest of our waterfront and uh, then Ojibwe Landing. And so when I look at it, as one piece of a giant puzzle extending from, you know, one end of the barbell to the other end of the barbell being a Jibway landing and then the waterfront park in between, which has a beach. Um, I started to think about, you know, what, what, is, what is really important in the, from the town dock standpoint. And when I, you know, heard comments with respect to the beach and the cost and some of the other comments that have already been made, Looking at it from the overall beachfront, um, I said that this was something that, um, you know, I would put it in the, in the nice to have category as opposed to the need to have, and therefore I would not be supporting it. Any other, any other comments? Well, David and team, I think you've heard the response from uh, members of council on this particular one. Did you want to move on to the next item? Yes, thank you, uh, Councillor Vadabunker. So the next item is, is the boat launch. And just before we discuss it, I just want to provide a little bit of um, uh, just context to it. I mean, this is a huge item because it's mostly related to the parking requirements that are associated with the boat launch. When we started the study, uh, we were of the opinion that there was potential to be relocating the boat launch to other areas within the town. Um, there's obviously been pushback on that um, idea. Um, and so what we wanted to do was open up this because it's very central to determining how it is that we plan for the town dock. So the question associated with it, um, I'm just gonna put it out there. Is there potential to consider removing the boat launch or is the boat launch, has it been decided that it is staying um, in its existing location? Okay, well, thanks for setting that context, uh, Your Worship. Uh, I have mixed feelings on this boat launch thing, and I look at our dock and our dock launch area, and the way that I see it today is that a good portion or a good part of our dock area is actually a commercial, commercial in the sense that uh, if you go on any hot weekend, a Saturday or Sunday, it is basically wall-to-wall -wall trailers. And uh, then um, if we're looking at and what's being suggested, and I agree that I think to a drawing card for the dock area, it, making it a more passive area um, that uh, for the time being, I think that we, we have to retain our launching ramp. But on the other hand, I would not be adverse to down the road, seeing it relocated to another area, but and that would be down the road because I know that it would be very costly to move the launching ramp to another area. But it's not something that I might not think about. Like we look at, uh, say for example, the dog park area, there's a parking lot there, a bit of a parking lot there now is that that could be expanded and launching ramp could be easily be uh, brought in to that area, but at what cost? And then if we do away with the existing one, it removes all that commercial aspect 
You know, we 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 have to admit and we have to look at the fact that when we're when we're looking at that, we're basically almost a marina as opposed to a passive dock area. So my comments. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, Councillor Mayotte and then Councillor Levy. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. I prefer to see the launching ramp in the parking lot stay. Like I was talking to the dock master and like, for example, last year, we had six weekends in a row full to capacity. And sometimes you had to go park trailers, some other places. And he says during the week last year, like Monday to Friday, yes, some days were stand because maybe it was too windy or rainy, but up to 50 vehicles. And this year, we've already had three weekends full to capacity. And we're not even to, into the summer yet. So like, you know, we're looking at the people, bring the people into town. And that's, you know, like over 100 cars and trailers that are in town using our facilities and using some of the restaurants or the wherever, wherever they go, pick up their food or their drinks, whatever it is. And that's why I have a hard time seeing this, the, the launching ramp in the parking lot leave. I'm totally, totally against it. I prefer to see it stay where it is. Thank you, Councillor, Councillor Levy, and then Councillor Rose. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. I would like to see the launch ramp stay. However, if there is compromise to be made, uh, perhaps we could find some, uh, perhaps we could allow uh, 24 hour parking for the trucks and trailers at the launch ramp parking and uh, develop some kind of uh, space for the long-term people to park uh, off-site. Uh, perhaps, as Councillor Vadovan Kaur mentioned earlier, uh, potentially using uh, the dog park parking area if it were expanded slightly. It doesn't have to be something marvelous and completely finished. It just needs to be cleared and graveled. Um, so th that would be the compromise I, I could uh, accept uh, and support, support. but uh, uh, yeah, I, I, I firmly believe that the launch ramp brings in uh, a very large amount of revenue to our town, not only directly um, for the people paying to launch, but also to our restaurants and shops. It's quite lovely to look out on the main street in the summer and see whole families walking up with their personal flotation devices on. Not every town has that. Uh, it's a special part of our culture. And I'm, as a city transplant, I'm always extremely hesitant to uh, see the removal of what is important to our local area and culture. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, Councillor Rose, then Deputy Mayor, and then Councillor Cummings. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I wanted to say I think the lawn tramp should stay. One of our big things that we did a few years back, we spent about $10 million to upgrade our main street. Our main street, you always hear that we want to drive people down there to get them to the businesses. On a regular basis down at the down dock, uh, you can go through and see 100 to 150 cars cars, trucks, trailers. So that drives that many people up and down our main street. That's probably our biggest tourist driver that we have in the entire town. So to move that would, would be to me completely irrelevant. We would be you know, spending $10 million on the main street and then tell them to go park. To have a side parking lot, for example, like Councillor Levy was just saying, it wouldn't be working. Uh, I'm a boater. I use the launch ramp. I'm not going to go down, launch my boat, then drive all the way down to where the dog park is and then get a shuttle or something back and forth. I'm carrying kids and life jackets and live fish and it just completely wouldn't work. Just absolutely. So I, I would say no, the, the launching ramp needs to say it's an economic driver. It's a big reason that our that our town dock exists. The other point I wanted to make while we were talking about it was uh, the agreement probably 20 years ago 
when we were going to revamp the docks and when we put the new launch ramp in, it was on a pay-per-use basis. The people that, that use it pay for it. It derives a lot of money to the town. When you look at all the other things that we supply, like a library, like a museum, like all the other things we do, none of them make money. I don't know why we would even consider messing with the one and the only thing that brings us in some income and does not hurt the tax bill. Thank you, Councillor. Deputy Mayor and then Councillor Cummings. Uh, thank you, Councillor. Uh, yes, I do believe the launching ramp should stay, but as people have spoke prior, I'm not adverse in years to come when a proper proposal uh, could come forward and we could realign it uh, further along our waterfront. As uh, Council LaRose just mentioned, the launching ramp certainly is a big part of making that dock area sustainable. We strive to have that area be self-sufficient, try not to put tax dollars into the facility. So taking the dock launch away, taking the boat launch away, we have to replace that with uh, something that would bring in dollars. So, and we have spent a lot of money to make that a uh, state-of-the-art launching ramp. Everybody you talk to, it's great, it's easy, it's accessible, lots of good things going for it. So I think for the time being, it sure, certainly should be part of our long-term development. If in fact, uh, as we go down this path, uh, something else comes up, certainly uh, not adverse to looking at it. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Deputy Mayor, Councillor Cummings. Thank you. <clears throat> um, I guess what I'm say I'm I'm trying to say is that I believe that the launch ramp, uh, and no one has been able to come up with any kind of figures that believe that I believe are economic drivers for our town. I sit down there and watch people go and launch their boat. They're gone for a day, they're gone for two days. Then they come back, they will pick up their boat and they leave. So 90% of that happens all the time. Marinas are using our boat launch to launch boats to take to their marinas. There are several uh, fishermen in our area, lots of fishermen as a matter of fact, that go down there, take up a took parking spots for a weekend or for a day and they pick up their boat and they leave. So I'm not sure where the economic driver is here. Yes, the transients who come in who are not with boat trailers or they come in at the transient dock will walk uptown. But 90% of these people who have boats and trailers, they're there to drop off and pick up and they're done. I think the big key factor here is if you don't move one, then you might as well forget about the rest because the parking is going to become a huge problem. I looked at 31 boat, or pardon me, 31 trucks this weekend, all with trailers. So you're taking up about 66, 67 parking spaces. So that's, that's a lot of parking that's being taken up with people who are just out fishing for the day or gone to their cottage for the weekend. So really, I think we should really be thinking about where we have that boat launch and we're still gonna make the money if we put it somewhere else. It's just, we have to really think about what we're doing here. Thank you, Councillor Cummings. Any other, any other comments? Okay, I'm gonna wait in here. Um, oh, okay, I'll, uh, after I've made my comments, Councillor Rose, if I haven't had a chance to speak yet. So, you know, I understand the, I understand the location of the launching ramp and, and why it's there. I think it's, you know, it, it makes perfect sense as has been pointed out, it's the bottom of Main Street, it's easy access. I always thought, does it specifically have to be located exactly where it is or can it be shifted on the site? And my thought was perhaps it could be shifted closer, closer to the, to the um, sewage treatment plant because that area is somewhat sterilized from development because of the proximity to the plant and it wouldn't, it would uh, eliminate that kind of divide between uh, Mr. Berduris's, uh 
two properties. So I thought maybe it could locate, relocate on site. But, you know, it, and to a point that was made earlier, the secondary plan makes reference to the future and looking at things in the future. And I'm not married to the language in the secondary plan per se with respect to the boat launch relocation. But I think that if the language could be such that it was in the future, it shall be reviewed um, in, on its own, just as a, its own entity in terms of uh, looking at its the best location in the community. Um, I'm not saying that it needs to be done tomorrow or you know next week or next year, but I think it, there is merit to having a look at it. I think there's very valid reasons for it to stay where it is that have been outlined, but I also think it's incumbent if we're thinking about the future, at least to say we will have a look at it. And um, I think that's important. So those are my comments. Um, just to sum up, I, for the time being, keep it where it is um, and look to the future potentially for a, a study to relocate. Uh, Councillor Rose? Yeah, it was just a quick um, uh, Sunday, we were out on the boat and a plane was going by and he was taking a bunch of aerial shots of all the different marinas. And uh, I got them to send the, uh, the picture. And when you count it, there's about 79 trucks and trailers in the uh, parking lot at the dock and another 40, 45 cars in front of the dock lunch, just, for, just so we know what it looked like on a typical Sunday. You, went, you pushed the mute button there at the end there, Councillor. Okay, any further come? Oh, sorry, Councillor. We didn't hear what you said at the end there after the 45 cars in front of the dock lunch. Just said it was a typical Sunday. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Your Worship. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I just want to reiterate that the fact that uh, for the time being, as I pointed out, for the time being, I think we, we have very little choice in keeping the launch ramp where it is. But this whole uh, um, layout has been planned for possibly over the next 15 years uh, as a movement goes on in phases and such. And that's why I suggested and I recommended that, and I agree with Councillor Cummings, that along the way that we might possibly be looking at relocating our launching ramp. And I don't particularly think that relocating it on the same property would solve the parking issue or a parking, the parking problem that exists with trailers and boats and everything else. Uh, it was pointed out, yes, that they're there. And, and Councillor LaRose just made mention that when you look at a, a typical Saturday, Sunday, when it's extremely busy uh, and the place is full, they're, they're, they're actually parking boat, uh, trucks and trailers up on, on the point, uh, uh, on the grass, on the point. Um, and you see a whole slew of vehicles parked all the way from the entrance, all the way back out to the dock lunch along that, that fence, along that sidewalk. And uh, my wife uh, remarked to me one day, well, where are all those vehicles? Well, it's plain to see that all those vehicles are getting on with the people that have launched their boat. Uh, there, there's sometimes boats in there that take four or five people, six people, but there's not that many people in the truck that's parking it or using it. So the overflow comes with them. Uh, sure, we, we collect the parking uh, fee in that, but uh, it, uh, it, it's a question of uh, parking. Uh, it's, I don't know, it's, it's just unruly. And I think that we can best use that land down the road somewhere in the future uh, as a more uh, passive park area and move our launch ramp somewhere um, further downstream. Thank you, Worship. Um, last comment to you. That's a nice segue into the next item on the um, on our agenda, which has to do with parking. And David, did you want to set the context for this one? Uh, yes, thank you, uh, Councillor Vadivon Pierre. Um, so obviously parking is critical to the entire idea around placemaking. And, and to be frank, it is a challenge achieving um, both what we were told as initial direction around being bold, 
um, and the vision while balancing the need for parking. Um, so in the event that the boat launch remains, where are there opportunities in the mid to long term not to um, remove parking for trucks and trailers as they are loading the boat, um, but offsite so that as I believe it may have been Councillor Levy mentioned earlier, um, for long-term parking, whether that's for a weekend or for longer, where are there opportunities to accommodate that um, in the long term um, for long-term parking? Um, and, and we'll open it up too, because I know there are some opinions that there aren't opportunities for that, but um, it is critical to the study. So I will open up where are there are opportunities for, for long-term parking offsite. So any comments uh, from members of council? Um, Madam Director, I see you've turned your video on. Did you have some comments to make? I just too also wanted to add in, in with David too, it's, it's also about what other things could we maybe be thinking of differently when it comes to parking? And we know that long-term parking there is, is probably not paying for itself. You know, the revenue from a, a person that parks there for the week again is different from the revenue being generated from a day tripper or something like that. but thinking about how to make this um, work differently also and, and operationalize parking differently. I know there's been a lot of talk in the news uh, recently about you know, how municipalities are controlling their parking, you know, especially on their waterfront for, you know, for local residents only or premium for those from out of town. So not just where, but also is there opportunities for changing how we offer parking uh, to make it something that we do want down there. And the revenue's not bad too. Thank you, Madam Director. Uh, Mayor LaRue. Uh, thank you, Councillor. I'm on mute. Uh, thank you, Councillor Vidamankar. Uh, a question through to David. David, when you say long term parking, uh, are you talking someone that would be coming in with a boat trailer that may be going for two or three or four days? That's that's correct. Yes. Okay. So then, uh, and then, so in long term parking, uh, actually, and Councillor Levy brought it up. Is that for me? I the only place I would see that that would be possible at the moment, at the time on 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 town on land, would be the parking lot area down by the dog park. Thank you, Your Worship, uh, Councillor Cummings. Thank you. Um, yeah, I think also the Curling Club would be um, an, an additional parking space. The only problem with having it off site is again, you have a dock, or pardon me, you have launched your boat. It's a 30 foot boat and it's sitting at the dock for 20 minutes so, so that you get your truck parked into the Curling Club. It takes about seven minutes to walk from the Curling Club to the launch ramp. Um, so you've got a boat tying up space there. So it's going to slow down launch. That's the only consideration I would have for off-site parking. Thank you, Councillor. Any other comments? Uh, Councillor Rose? Yeah, if you were considering having uh, off-site parking, uh, it, it still creates a lot of traffic problems because if I'm going to bring my boat down there, I'm going to launch, I want to unload the wife, the kids, the fish, all the stuff and such. Then I have to get over to where the new parking would be. Then I have to go back. Then I have to get in line. You go down there in a weekend, lots of times there's seven, eight, nine boats going in at a time, two or three coming out at the same time. Now I have to line up for another 20, 25 minute wait we'd just be hurting ourselves in the end. Any other, any other comments? Uh, okay, well, I'll wait in then. Um, you know, for, for years, marinas, you know, stored boats um, uh, in the wintertime or when the boats weren't at their slips on uh, surface areas. And several years ago, um, Marina started introducing these racks where boats would be stored um, in a vertical in a vertical situation. There was a, a forklift that would pick the boat up and, and put it in the rack. And so marinas were able to 
um, increase the uh, availability of boat storage on their properties. And my point here is that I'm wondering if there's, you know, technology that maybe is not available now that might be available in the future that will allow for some sort of arranging of the trailers. You know, it was mentioned earlier about how the trailers do take up, um, you know, double the space. You have the truck and then you have the trailer. But if there was some way that the trailers could be managed in a way that maintained their proximity, that were easy access, that, um, you know, so that people could park in close proximity to the, to the launch, that that would address um, the, some of the concerns and comments. So maybe it hasn't been invented yet. Maybe it is out there. We're just not aware of it. But uh, certainly the use of, of a creative means such as the boat uh, storage, those racking systems, if something was available for trailers, that would be ideal. Any other comments or questions on that one? Uh, Madam Deputy Mayor. Thank you. Uh, but where would you put something like that on the existing site? I think you would put it adjacent the sewage treatment plant because you can't put any type of activity near the plant that, you know, like a restaurant or anything like that because of the separation distance. So that would be something that, you know, um, maybe closer to Main Street, but near the, uh, near the sewage treatment plant. Mm -hmm. um, parking certainly is a big issue. Um, as a past voter myself, um, I know that uh, when you launch your boat, all of your, especially certain sizes of boat, I guess, all of your equipment and everything is on. And I think it would just be a matter of timing that people would get used to the fact, okay, maybe the husband or whoever launches the boat, the other one takes the boat and the trailer and gets it over to the proper parking spot and then gets back. I don't think that would be that big of an issue. It may be an inconvenience in the beginning, but I think uh, people would uh, get used to that if they had to take their truck and trailer, say over to the curling club area and then walk back. It, it's a quick, a quick walk, five minutes. And if we ever had a promenade out across the water, it would even be quicker. So I don't think it's something that uh, would be that much of an imposition. Thank you. Welcome, Madam Deputy Mayor. I have uh, Mayor LaRue and then Councillor Rose. And then I think we'll move on to, oh, and then Councillor Clue. Councillor Clue, I have the last word. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. The, uh, the, the only comment I make here in regards to the curling club and, and trying to use it as, a, as an overflow or a, a parking lot area for boats and trailers is they have to bear in mind and keep in mind that uh, there are a lot of vehicles parked there that use the waterfront park to walk the legacy trail that go walking left, right, east, west, north. They, they're in the park. They're in the park, and so there's a, quite a number of vehicles that are parked at the curling club on a good day. So again, are you going to start putting uh, trucks and trailers on curling club parking lot, and then not have access for the people who want to park and walk in in the, in the waterfront park? My comment. Thank you, Worship. Uh uh, before I go to Councillor Rose, just uh, mention that uh, Councillor Sanamal has joined the meeting now, so she's uh, part of our meeting. Councillor Rose and then Councillor Clue. Well, I wonder why, as the Deputy Mayor just stated, why we would want to make it an, an inconvenience. What, what is wrong with having the parking where it is? We spent $8 million on our park to have a passive park, to have the less, uh, legacy walkway. We have the statues, the astragal at the far end of the park. We have a real beach. Uh, I don't know why we're trying to go through this whole process and trying to make life difficult when we don't need to make life difficult. Plus, if we start parking uh, trailers and trucks down there, as the mayor stated, that screws up the, the curling club parking lot. It screws up for all the people that are coming down just to go for a walk. So does that mean then that we would have to hire another attendant to watch those vehicles? Whereas 
where they are now. It is in a controlled situation and it's in a controlled parking lot. So I don't know why we're going through the whole process of saying, can we just make this harder? Is, is, is there a possible way that we can say to a local person that works at the local factory, gets off of work, wants to jump in his truck, take his boat down and go fishing for an hour after supper. They live here. That's why they moved here. And for a, a, a large portion of people, they like that. So I don't know why we're trying to go through the process of saying, can we make it any harder? Can we, can we try and, and take the one thing that we're making money on and that makes people happy and, and just make people unhappy for I don't understand the purpose? Thank you, Councillor. Uh, Councillor Clue. And then I said it was going to be last word, but I see his worship's put up his card. So might have to defer to his worship. But Councillor Clue. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'm quickly jotting down as many ideas as I can just listening to the conversation. I, I think there's a lot of um, opportunities to be flexible, as, as many people before me have stated. I like the, the technology that perhaps doesn't exist. Uh, Mr. Chair, your dry stack idea for, for trailers, I think that would be really neat. Um, if we did potentially find an offsite parking, parking location, um, I think there's a, a chance to, for us to provide a level of service with golf carts perhaps where we can uh, transport people, perhaps there's a valet service. These are all operational things that we can look at that maybe don't make it into um, the physical planning document, but there are things I think that we can do. Um, tiered rates of service, sort of a hybrid situation where we, we, we keep a lot of the parking down at the town dock, but we also um, a, find a spot to do more parking offsite so that we can actually have more boats being launched and not turning people away, but we provide different, different rates of service. Like I said, perhaps golf carts are transporting people. Um, one of the things I thought I'd mention, and this might not fly over with everybody. We haven't really talked about the potential of locating some parking spaces in the CN Park. Um, I, for one, and I, I'm sure you all agree, I love the Kichi Kiwana statue. I actually don't feel like that's a prominent location. And I think we could relocate that statue and perhaps find some additional parking in that park, which is uh, pretty underutilized. And um, we could decrease parking in certain areas of the town dock, but throw a few spots over there and then find some offsite parking and just establish a really great hybrid solution. So those are my thoughts for now. Thanks. Thank you, uh, Councillor Clue. Um, so we have uh, two more cards, Mayor LaRue and Mayor, uh, and sorry, Councillor Levy. Um, we're at seven o'clock now. We still have a couple of more points to cover and then maybe there's some wrap up here that uh, David wants to share with us. So um, I'll go quickly to Mayor LaRue, then Councillor Levy, and then we're moving on to our next point, if that's uh, good. Okay, uh, Mayor LaRue. Very good. Thank you, uh, Councillor Bodebonker. And I won't be long. Uh, I, I kind of I, I like uh, uh, the idea of uh, Councillor Clue uh, with the golf cart deal, where you could transport these people back to uh, to their boat, but and but for me again, if we're looking at an off-site parking area, to me it would have to be more the dog park area, uh, because again, when I brought up about the uh, the curling club, one other thing that we don't uh, keep in mind or we don't have in mind is the fact that uh, when times are good, no COVID, that our amphitheater every Friday night accommodates about three to four hundred people that are going to be want to use that parking lot. So if it's full of trailers and boats and, and trucks, uh, where's the parking for the people that are wanting to go to the concert? Thank you, Worship. Uh, Councillor Levy, last word to you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chair. I just wanted to respond to Jessica's suggestion. Uh, it, it has validity unless you were uh, Councillor Vadavancourt and I, which played the key role in bringing the Kichikwana statue to town. Uh, all those years ago. And it was actually the First Nations people who chose that location. And uh, I think uh, I would be, uh, oh, and plus we spent, oh, tens of thousands in the foot on the footings underground to get that location. So I would be uh, hesitant to even have a discussion about uh, moving it. Although I do understand that there is some 
you know, some validity to using that space. I just, I don't think the kitschy statue is touchable. Thank you. Councilor Levy, I think, uh, thank you for your comments. Um, so I think that wraps up that one. So I'm gonna, David, I'm gonna turn it over to you for the Tourist Information cent uh, Center. Yep. And uh, you can provide the context again. Thank you, Councilor Dadabankura. Uh, I also wanna just thank everybody too for all of this input. It's, I think this has been a really helpful discussion. Um, there, there is, uh, quite a bit more, we're probably about a, this, these are the most important points that we're discussing right off the bat. Um, I, I will mention them, that there is a, a number of other questions. Uh, I'm also respectful of people's time, so it, we don't need to go through them, but if people would like to continue discussing some of the other questions we can, we're more than happy to stay on as well. Um, the, the next question is around the Tourist Information Center. My understanding is that it is going to the next council meeting for a decision on whether or not to invest in the existing location. So this is a, a, a key discussion point that we would like to discuss, bring up. And that is whether or not we have the opportunity um, to, to move it, which is as we've identified on the plan, we're recommending moving it closer to Main Street. Um, so we'd like to get input on if it makes sense to move it and if it is moving, um, what the impact would be on investing in the facility uh, in the present location. Thank you. Uh, before we um, go to members of council, does, does anybody have any time constraints? Uh, we're at seven o'clock now. Um, I have another meeting myself at 7.30. So that's uh, another Zoom meeting. So that's my uh, kind of drop dead time, but I'm uh, more than happy to continue going until 7.29 and, and uh, carry on. So I'll open it up if there's any comments with respect to the Tourist Information Center, uh, where it's located, should it be moved, um, those types of uh, comments. Councillor LaRose. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I'm kind of wondering whether we even need one now, the way uh, technology is progressing you look at these electronic kiosks, it could be scaled down, we could control the message. I don't know that we actually need a great big building. Uh, when Councillor Clue was mentioning about the statue, it might be a, a good spot for the, the, the kiosk, an electronic kiosk to move over closer to there, which would open up some more space. I think that would be something that I would, uh, I would probably be uh, a little happier about. Thank you. Um, I think I saw a comment. Um, is it Madam Deputy Mayor and then Councillor Cummings? Uh, thank you. Yes, I do believe we should incorporate a new uh, information uh, building along with new uh, shower and washrooms and accessibility. That is something that we need down there for transient voters and for the general public. So I think we could incorporate a new building in that fashion. And also I would like to see us utilize some of our, uh, the local history and using a design that would be more using lumber that we are noted in our community as a lumber town many moons ago. So it would be nice to draw that back, either that or a replica of the train station that used to be there. That's another idea that comes to mind. But I do think uh, tourist information, not everyone has iPhones uh, and computers and iPads that they carry with them all the time. So. I think it is important to have tourist information available and closer. I kind of like that idea of in the CN Park, that might be a good spot for a building, although it would not incorporate washrooms and showers for the voters at that location, but uh, just some thought. Thank you. 
Thank you. If I can just add one point of clarification to the question that we really want to get across is a locational question. We're identifying in the plan um, closer to, to Main Street. Um, and if we'd like to just receive counsel in the uh, technical advisory committee's opinion on the location. Thank you for that clarification. Um, so I see Councillor Cummings and I believe Councillor Mayotte, Councillor Sanama, and then Councillor Clue. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, two schools of thought here. Um, depending on the size of the building, uh, whether we incorporate the tick and the showers and washroom areas, I think um, we're spot on to further or further towards Main Street. Um, if you take a look at uh, Kuchiching Park, um, the new tick building that they have there with that they incorporated washrooms and everything, it's a beautiful building and it's right off just off the site a little bit and it, it works really well. So I think pretty close to uh, um, perhaps per closer to Main Street would be better. It's just so that it's out of the way, but accessible. Uh, I also, as, and the second school of thought is I also agree with uh, Councillor Rose. However, I think the kiosk should be at, at the dock area and not on Main Street. Thank you, Councillor Cummings, uh, Councillor Mayotte, and then uh, Councillor Clue. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Oh. Um, I've been looking at the, at the, the kiosk, the washrooms in a chamber. Um, I think it's a good idea to redo it. Definitely move it from where it is because it has to be fixed. If you're going to fix it, might as well put it up a new building and put it where the statue is, but sort of wrap it around the statue. We can also see the statue, make it stick out, stick out more and have washroom for the transit or people using the launching ramp. And like I say, for the dock master, um, when he does his, uh, um, his tour, he usually uses the truck to pick up the garbage or to help someone. So that wouldn't be out of his way. And uh, it's right on the main street, but you know, involve our statue could you want to, to be part of the, uh, um, of the kiosk or the whatever kind of a central station we want to do. So, but yeah, I, we definitely need one. And I think that's a good spot to put it. That's my opinion. Thank you, Councillor. I think Councillor Sanama and uh, Councillor Clue. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I, I do agree that we we need to um, to get a new building and the the changing of the location closer to Main Street. I think is is the best way to it is the best way to go. Um, with even with the washrooms and the showers, if they're incorporated in that in the same building, it's not that far a walk for the uh, for the boaters. Um, I don't think it would be that big of an inconvenience at all. Not that it would be an inconvenience, it's just a little bit of a walk. Um, like I said, closer to, to closer to Main Street makes, to me makes a lot more sense. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, Councillor Clue. Uh, just to, my two cents is that I think it's fine to be close to Main Street. It doesn't bother me at all. Um, it doesn't bother me at all to keep it with that waterfront kiosk building either though. So I'm, I'm completely open to the consultant's um, final conclusion on that one. <laughs> Thank you. Um, my comment, I would just echo uh, Councillor Clue's comment. You know, I, I see the merit in moving it closer, but I think that's associated with other facilities. So having a look at the bigger picture where um, the consultants come back and, and make recommendation, then I'd be prepared to consider that. Any other comments uh, on that, Your Worship? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I agree with uh, both actually, you just uh, Councillor Clue and your comments and the fact that I think uh, I, I wouldn't have a problem or an issue of, of relocating the kick uh, to where it's being proposed by our consultants. Uh, the big thing uh, with all of this was uh, the fact that we know that the building that is there now is seen its time. But on the other hand, is that the, doing away with it, it, the idea of it is to open that vista, that view to the lake. And so moving it closer to the main street, uh, I think is uh, a good idea. Thank you. Okay, I think David, you've heard comments uh, from, from members of council on that. Um, so the next is other, or if we go on the agenda, 
it's other on the agenda as well. So that's the opportunity to bring forward additional items. Any any further comments on on that? Okay, seeing none. Oh, sorry, uh, Madam Deputy Mayor. Thank you, um, Mr. Chair. Um, I wonder where we haven't talked about the possibility of some kind of a a square or a meeting place. I know on the designs that were brought forward, it was grass surface. And I'd like to see some kind of a square that could be used for a lot of different things and maybe interlocking brick instead of something that uh, would require maintenance. If in fact the tick office is moved closer to the main street, that gives us uh, area that maybe we could incorporate something like that in that area. Thank you. Any other comments? We have uh, Mayor LaRue and then uh, Councillor Clue. Along the lines of uh, the Deputy Mayor, uh, I think something that we should or should be looked at again is, is the entrance or the existing entrance into the dock and the dock area, uh, eliminating and doing away some of those big buffer zones that, uh, you know, you're riding around going in one way and ripping around the other. And, and I think, you know, it would gain some park area and some amenities that uh, don't exist. Good. Thank you, Worship. Councillor Clue. Uh, just to bounce off what the mayor just mentioned about the entrance. I know the plan talks about some winter activities and tonight I think we've been focused primarily on summer. Uh, the town dock. I'd like to make sure that we have a proper staging for our festival of lights, our tree lighting ceremony. And right now we use that, the large trees that are in that entrance area, but we need to make sure that we preserve a spot for that. That would be great. Okay. David, some, um, some additional items there for you to consider. Oh, so Councillor Sanama, sorry, I missed your card there. That's okay. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Um, just just to add on to the point, I mean, that the the reason that we were doing this initially was so that we had um, it was more pedestrian friendly in that area and to open it up, you know, for for the general public as well. So I, I, I agree with, you know, making some adjustments to the to the entry entryway. So it's it's less um, just less intrusions and make it you know more more accessible and um overall make it um more welcoming as opposed to just all the all the concrete thank you councillor i think uh the consultants uh, certainly took that input into consideration in in the design uh, i was impressed how they um brought the roadway out so that instead of the loop that was kind of ingrained, they brought it out and had more of a pedestrian oriented area uh, as part of their concept that they brought forward. Is there opportunity for improvement uh, perhaps, but I think they did a really good first step in that, in that regard in terms of their design. Um, any, other, any other comments? Okay. I'm going to move on the agenda then as um, we've got a couple of more items, the vision, key plan elements, and phasing conclusion next steps. And uh, your worship, uh, we'll see what we can do to get through this. Uh, I don't want to rush anybody, but as I said, I have another meeting and I'm unfortunately I'm chairing that one too. So uh, it may not proceed with unless I uh, able to get there. So we may run out of, I may run out of time. So I'm just putting you on notice, Your Worship. So I'm going to turn it back over to uh, David. Um, uh, 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 Councilor Vredemacher, I, I, I guess I must say that it's not the first time I've been put on notice. <laughs> uh, thank you, Councilor Vredemacher. And, and this is the key point of the entire discussion. So we can get through the rest, I think, really quickly. Um, I recognize that people have time commitments, P perhaps um, those who need to leave are obviously welcome to leave too, but we can continue going through. Um, Dylan, if you can move to the next slide, please. 
Uh, the vision, I, I don't know if this is the best use of everyone's time to revisit the vision, but we can go through this very quickly and see if there are questions. But the vision statement as identified is that the town dock will be an active and vibrant destination that reflects Penetanguishing's heritage and culture. It will serve as a centralized public space that is safe and inclusive with spectacular views of the water that could be enjoyed and accessed year round. Its connection to downtown will be enhanced through opportunities that support the local community and economy. Dylan, if we can move to the next slide, please. The first question, and if people are in general agreement, then we can move on through this quickly, but if they are not, we'll take down those comments is are you in general agreement with the vision statement? And Dylan, if you can just exit the full screen so we can take notes as well, that would be appreciated. So any comments on the um, vision statement as outlined? It's pretty good, yes. Uh, that's a yes. I guess that's a support for the vision statement as outlines. I'm seeing some thumbs up and some yeses. I concur. Um, I thought it was a. I thought it was a very good vision um, for the town dock area. So, any other comments on that? Okay, we'll move on then, David. Great. Uh, next slide, please, Don. Um, I think we'll move on from that question as well. The rest of this should should go quicker. Um, the next is around key plan elements, and we'll start off in, in like two seconds, we're going to run through the best practices that we identified. So we want to have an interactive and engaging public realm. Next, please. Continuous public access to the water, um, the waterfront, uh, and the official plan itself identifies that there needs to be a 15 meter setback for any new buildings as well. Um, so it is already embedded within policy. Uh, next slide, please. A plan that reflects the town's history and culture. Next slide, please. A focal point connected to downtown and parklands. Next. Implementation centered on economic development, recognizing that this is not a great picture, um, but the, the uh, best practice itself remains. Next. An exceptional town dock and waterfront in all seasons. Next an entry point dependent tang machine from the water. Next. Um, a destination forever with 10 plus reasons to visit. So 10 points of, at least 10 points of interest on the site. Next. And what we wanted to open it up and we started to discuss this on, under other is th those are the key best practices that we've identified. But in your opinion, other than what we discussed under the key discussion point, what are elements that are a must for incorporation into the plan? So members of council, um, we've gone through the key elements and they are outlined in the, some of the documents that were provided to us earlier. Any comments or um, opinions? Your Worship. You're on mute, You're on mute Your Worship. Uh, yes, Mr. Chair, I think that all, basically all of the key elements that have been brought forward and pointed out are all very good uh, uh, key points. And I think that I would possibly like to see a lot of those incorporated because we are looking at a plan that's probably spread out over a long term, uh, 10, 15 years. It's not something that's all going to happen overnight or the next year or two. So I think that uh, as we proceed and as we go along, I think I'd like to see a good majority of those incorporated. Thank you, Worship. Yeah, I, th I thought they were quite good as well. I think they embellish what we have been talking about in terms of what our goals are for the town dock area. So I, I would agree. Any other comments? Okay, thank you, David. I think you've heard uh, feedback on those. Great, uh, so next slide, please, Dylan. 
Uh, the next slide uh, identifies the current capital plan um, for the area from 2021 to 2030. Um, we can open this up to any, any uh, questions or comments there are, but really this is just to identify that part of the reason for having this discussion is because we know that there is significant investment happening in the town dock. Um, next slide, please. And there were questions um, from Councillor LaRose uh, with respect to capital costs. So we have done, and keep in mind that this is um, high level. Uh, it's based on Altus's uh, 2021 Canadian cost guide, um, uh, as well as conversations uh, with, with um, landscape architects with respect to landscaping, uh, but it looks at construction costs, costs for um, new parking and asphalt um, and landscaping. So phase one, is in the range of $2.6 million. Again, it's very order of magnitude at this cost, at this level. Um, phase two, please. Or sorry, next slide, please. Uh, next slide um, with the additional improvements as identified. And again, I'll mention that the plan is evolving, um, is in the range of an additional uh, $2.5 million um, for, for construction costs. Um, uh, and phase three, uh, phase three, I'm very hesitant to share the cost because it's too early, too high level to identify that. But I can confirm that the costs for phase three are significantly more. Um, and the majority of those costs are around extending um, the area for the urban beach and the area for the pier. And that is too because of how deep it has to go into the water. So it's, it's we, we have looked at those costs, but um, we really don't have uh, the ability to provide confidence with the, the, the level of detail that is prepared as of yet, but I can confirm that there would be significantly more. Um, next slide, please. Uh, phasing, and there are just a few questions around phasing. Um, we're going to actually open up a, a mural activity uh, to discuss this. Um, which I think we can still do fairly quickly. So Dylan, if you could open it up, that'd be great. Worship, I think I'm gonna take my leave. I apologize to my fellow members of council and, and those on the, on the call here. This was already pre-scheduled. And as I said, I'm, I'm chairing, I have, to, I have to leave. So I'm gonna hand it back to you, your worship, and you. Uh, look forward to the next time we get together. Thank you, Councillor Bademacher, and uh, good luck with your next meeting. Thank you. David, if you want to continue. Uh, thank you, um, Your Worship. Um, uh, so Dylan, if you can perhaps just focus in a little bit more on phase one, just zoom in a bit closer. We can likely, I expect, be able to go through this um, fairly quickly because we've already discussed this, but this is the diagram identifying phase one. Um, I won't walk through all the elements of phase one. Um, uh, it may not be visible in here, but the boat launch is included in this in this diagram. Uh, the question is, what do you like about phase one and what would you change? I see uh, Councillor uh, Sinema. Thank you very much, Your Worship. Um, I, David, I like I like phase one. I like the elements of it. I like the way the entrance has been changed. Um, I like the relocation of the tick. Um, you've got that other small building is there as well, um, like down closer to the to the docks. It, it to me it it looks um, it it again it looks more welcoming, um, and I do think it you know the, the, many of the elements that we were looking at before have been incorporated into into that phase one. I think it looks good. Further comments, uh, members of council? Actually, on my screen, I'm not uh, seeing everyone. So, David, do you see uh, all the members of council there? I, I do, yes. I just have to scroll through. Um, I don't see anyone holding up. A yellow card? No, no, I don't see any yellow cards. Okay. Uh, I see Councillor Cummings, though. So. Councillor Cummings? Thank you, Your Worship. I was just gonna say that Deputy Mayor wanted to say something about a concrete area 
<laughs> it would probably be better if you were to put it in phase one, uh, but I'd let her speak to that. <laughs> so Deputy Mayor, uh, do you have a comment? Uh, thank you very much, Councilor Cummings and your worship. I do like the elements of phase one, just uh, the circle that is uh, representing perhaps uh, a gathering place. Um, I think it need, I'm not sure about the grass, I'm thinking of maintenance, but I do like uh, the elements. I like the new entrance um, and less parking for sure. And the relocation, very good, thank you. Uh, Councillor Clue. Thank you, Worship. Uh, I like um, the fact that it's definitely more pedestrian friendly, which is what we're trying to achieve. I feel like there's a quite a bit of impermeable surface, so I'd, I'd like to see less of that. Um, and I'm also curious about the parking area, specifically at the, the town dock. Some of those spaces look like they'd be backing into each other. I'm trying to just figure out how they work in real life. David, you have a comment on that? Yeah, I mean, so the drive aisles have been looked at in terms of um, the width that is the minimum width that is required. Uh, I think what we could do just to um, alleviate uh, or demonstrate how it works is to dimension it out. And then we'd be able to show that along with turning radar. Right that'll make it a bit clearer. So that's, that, that's a good point. And I think David, um, Councillor Clue is also referring to this, oh, this area. I would say it's more conceptual at this stage, and yes. uh, we have actually revised that, but we, yeah. That'll be definitely re looked at in the next uh, iteration. Uh, any other member of council have any comment or question, concern? There being none, then David, carry on. Sure. Uh, your worship, I was. Uh... You probably couldn't see my card. No, I couldn't see your card, Councillor LaRose. <laughs> Go ahead. All right. Um, there's a lot of elements in there that we like and don't like. But I mean, after from the beginning of this meeting, with all the changes that Council has made uh, their decision on about moving some things, keeping some things, uh, I wonder if, if it's there's to me that it's not worthwhile at all picking or choosing anything we like or dislike because phase one would look totally different than this. I would imagine. So uh, to me, it's uh, we would do this after the next meeting to see what the new plan looks like with some kept parking, with the idea that the launching ramp is going to stay with the thought of possibly moving the tick towards Main Street. And when that's all redeveloped, then we could look at the, this plan. But to me, there's no use picking apart little bits and pieces knowing that it would change uh, dramatically between now and then. Okay, David, again, comment or concern? Uh, or? I mean, what I can say is with respect to, to phase one that um, it will be evolving. So Councillor Rose is correct um, based on the discussions that we had earlier today. Um, the boat launch is included within phase one. I'll reference to that we'll be looking this closer but the area that is um just to the uh well if you're looking at the screen just to the right of the dock lunch um that is uh, an asphalt area for for trailers and, and trucks for parking um the, the point of this conversation just to keep it high level if there are elements that people want to ensure are included as these plans um uh, evolve that they see on it today, we, we just like to hear that. But Councillor Rose, I mean, the plans are evolving, so we can probably do this exercise fairly quickly. Um, but if there are comments that people have that they like or they hate, uh, we still would appreciate hearing them. Okay. Okay, other members of council have comments, concerns, questions? No, okay. Yeah. Oh. Your worship. Okay, Councillor Cummings. Um, David, just uh, you see the walkway starting on the Baduras property. Um, would that be assuming that we are buying or purchasing or permission to follow that path from the boat launch? There would have to be an agreement in place. 
um, uh, it, it's part of the consideration, yes, but um, that is one of the recommendations of the study is to is to look at that. Okay. Um, Dylan, perhaps, unless there are other comments on this, we can skip over phase two and we can just move to phase three. And um, the question for phase three is really focused on, are there any parts or are there parts of phase three that you would like to keep? And, and Councillor Clue, she had mentioned that there are parts of the beach that yeah. could potentially be um, included in a, in a different area at a lower cost. So yeah. that the comments. Yeah, doing away with the uh, urban beach as to where it is located at the moment that we say to remove that. And as Councillor Clue uh, pointed out, possibly looking at a different area where it could be done. Councillor Cummings. Thank you, Your Worship. I I think, David, for all intents and purpose, do we, have we explained what that beach really is? It's not a swimming beach. It's not a beach that we go to and, and walk in the water. It's a simulation, so to speak, is it not? It's not, it's not, a, it's not a beach that you go into the water at all. It's, um, if you look to the area to the left of the beach that is in green, that is identified as an area where people could go out and have picnics and have views of the water. The area to the, the, the right has sand. There would be sand, there would be um, umbrellas. Uh, it would be an area where people could go on a sunny day. Um, they could walk to the dock lunch um, and, and we view it as an area that would be an attractor um, for the town dock, but there is no um, um, access to the water. And if you were to ask uh, whether or not, you know, the plan works without it, the plan does work without that, without that beach. Uh, and, and as I pointed out, uh, when I look at that, I'm looking at a very extreme cost. Uh, Councilor LaRose? Well, I, I just wonder why we would want to invent something and make it somewhat happen when a three minute walk to the west, we have it all there now and natural. We have a walkway, we have a picnic area, we have real sand on a real beach that's at the real water. So why would we want to create something that's not real when we, we're, we have the luxury of already having all that We've already spent six, seven million dollars in the park. Why would I want to go sit on a phony one when the real one exists three or four minutes away? Okay, hey, thank you. So other than that, uh, David, you're looking at phase three there as to we, we, we are looking at uh, relocating the element or, um, and then are there any other points uh, and members of council with phase three that uh, that we uh, see or would have issue with? Uh, I, I, I certainly see that we'd be looking at, with, at an expansion to our wharf, um, which is, again, if we're looking at it being an area to uh, bring in revenue, that, that's not a bad thing. Uh, so it's basically phase three to me is creating both uh, a, a passive and a recreational area. So uh, members of council, questions or concerns more on phase three. Um, Your worship, if I may. Uh, yep. Okay, I also see Councillor Rose, but you go ahead, Madam Deputy Mayor. Thank you. Um, yes, totally against having that urban beach. I would rather see us take uh, the money that we might save in that respect than do a promenade. The connection from this area into our park along uh, the waterfront and connect our park somehow. That to me would be a better usage of money at this point. Thank yep. you. Okay, Councillor LaRose. I just wonder, I don't mind the idea of expanding uh, the, the dock slip so much, but every time you add one, you need to add parking. And 
there seems to be some issue with everybody why we should build it and then not give them a place to park. So I, I would at this point have to say no, unless you're enhancing the parking. You, you don't build a facility and then don't have anywhere to get into it. I look at a place like Wonderland. One of the biggest things they did was build a big parking lot. Why? Because you want people to come there. Why does Food Town, why do your grocery stores have parking lots? Because you go in, you buy your stuff, you got to haul it to your car. Uh, to me, with a boat and a trailer, if you're going to have a dock spot, you need parking. Parking is hugely important. We already have a beautiful park system. Okay. Other members of council, comments? Concerns? Questions? Yes, uh, Council Cinema. Thank you very much, Your Worship. Um, I, I do agree that the, um, that urban park area, it, it, I mean, the phase three can go ahead quite well without it. Um, and for the cost, I, I don't think that that is, I don't think that's something that we really need to be incorporating. Um, the, over, we, we do have a beautiful um, park area, but we, we also have a beautiful waterfront. And that's what this whole point is about, is to enhance it so that people want to come to it. it it's, it's inviting from the water, it's inviting from the, from the street, and it's, it's an attraction. It's a place for people to go. Um, and it is a, certainly an opportunity to, you know, to have other, um, other things happening. And, and still have a fabulous, a fabulous view of the water as well. So, like I said, in, in my mind, if that urban park area or urban beach area is gone, um, and then it's from the sounds of it, leaving the boat launch where it is, so we'll have to do some adjustments in that regard. But, and I still think from a parking perspective, you could put the, put the trailers over at the curling club. It's just my two cents. Thanks. Okay, other members of council, questions, concerns, or comments? Councillor Cummings? Thank you, Your Worship. Just one final comment. We're, we're treating this like it's, it's today. This situation is today. This is a 15 year project. Uh, I hate to say it, but most of us won't even be here to see the realization of this project, but it's expansion, it's tourism, it's enhancing our park. And I think with, with having been the, the drawings the way they are, someone in the future is gonna look at that and say, spot on. Um, we're, we're not guessing the future, we're staying in the past. And I think uh, we need to look at this every five years and look at this plan and say, yep, I think it's time and then move on from there. I totally agree, Councillor Cummings, and I don't know if anyone saw on, on, on their screen that the, in the chat part that from uh, uh, Andy Myers is that uh, uh, he's suggesting that if the docking or the additional wharf docking is, is uh, transient, then you don't need parking. Uh, Councillor LaRose, and then I have to plug in. I'm going to run out of power. Thanks. I I'm just wondering what the whole purpose is. As everybody's talking about the purpose, we can already all go to the dock now. We already all have the good view. We have the good park to walk in. Why are we trying to say to the taxpayers of our town, let's put your taxes up, spend three times, four times what we are now to build something that some tourists may come and use. And we're gonna make it hard on the regular people that have supported this dock and this dock system for the last 25 years. I don't understand what the advantage is for us. We're gonna make it harder on our residents by making them go and park their boat somewhere and park their truck somewhere and park their trailer somewhere. We're gonna make it hard for people to get in and around we're not adding anything. We're taking away the only thing in town that makes money and we're gonna charge the residents way more money on their taxes to do it. I don't see the upside, not at all. Okay, Councillor Cummings. Thank you, Your Worship. 
Perhaps you need to go to a marina, Dan. It's a lot easier. I'm there. Anyway, um, what I was going to say I is... All the marinas. I've <laughs> lived on the water my entire <laughs> life. <laughs> I know. <laughs> okay. um, now I lost my train of thought. I'll come back to it later. Okay. Further comments or concerns? Questions? Your Worship. Yes, Councillor Clue. Thank you. Um, uh, great. Now I lost my train of thought. Uh, what I wanted to say is in phase three, I do really, I just want to focus for a second on the, um, the elevated platform. I think it's a really great idea. One of the, the features as I consider this further in phase three, that's got me a bit concerned is the potentially inaccessible um, features that we're seeing with the loss of an entrance or any parking in that town dock central location. I, for, for one, am not a voter. Um, <laughs> to Councillor Rose's point, I, I think we're doing this because you may be looking at this town dock with rose colored glasses. I, I think it looks pretty awful and I think it needs significant upgrades and, and we, we should focus some money there. Um, but I do see, for instance, my parents love to go down to the, the dock lunch, get an ice cream, walk, walk around. I don't think they'd be able to do this in phase three. It would be far too far of a walk for them to park closer to the sewage treatment plant and then walk uh, the windy paths um, towards the dock. So I, I think we need to consider the accessibility component because I feel like we might be missing that. Okay. And further comments, questions, concerns? Okay, there are none. David, uh, you're still with us. I am. Uh, thank you. Thank you, uh, Your Honor. Uh, so we just have, I think, one last question that we can go through. And, and I really appreciate everybody staying uh, so late for this. Um, the first question is, um, is, should phases one and two be divided into more phases and should the timeline be reconsidered? I would certainly agree with the uh, timeline should be considered, uh, you know, uh, because we're, we're looking at a, a, at a very hefty project here. And, and when we look at the whole project, uh, uh, we're looking at, uh, at quite a cost. So I, I certainly think and feel myself that there would have to be phasing, uh, and and at what point uh, do you do you do it, uh, Councillor Larose? With all the discussion that we had earlier on in the meeting, and all these changes that need to be made, uh, I think just even at a high level, we we need to see what that new plan would look like, understand what a real cost would look like, and then we could decide if and when any of it uh, is going to happen, at what point. For us, uh, just to remind council, we spend just a shade over a million dollars a year on all of our capital infrastructure each year. So that's all our roads, that's all the, uh, everything getting fixed up, the town buildings, everything like that. So for us to add on six, eight, 10, 15 million dollars is, is very onerous on us. So un until we see a little more plan that we could live with, if we can live with it and see what an actual costing would be, then that would make a decision at that time. Okay. And, and that's why I agree and then suggest that the, the, yes, the, there would be a need to, to, uh, to do phasing. Uh, you have to know what is going to come before what. You know, is the horse going to be in front of the cart or behind the cart? And so these are all elements and, and things that have to be brought forward and, and then uh, associated with a cost. Further comments, concerns, questions? Mayor LaRue, you're not seeing my card, so I'll go ahead yep. and speak if I may, with your permission. Yes, go ahead, Councillor Levy. Okay, I, I just wanted to say regarding the phasing and breaking up the phases. I think we've gone far enough for tonight. We've all had a great deal to absorb. We have to process each other's comments. Uh, 
I think it would be appropriate for us to end discussion at this point. If you agree, Mr. Mayor, um, we can come back. Of course, we'll come back. This is going to be an on ongoing process. But I think before we talk about phases, we need some, uh, as, as Councillor Rose said, some meaningful uh, costing, some uh, changes as per what we discussed tonight. So I just want to put that out there if other people think it's appropriate to uh, end the conversation at this point and, and go back to it at another time. Yep. Uh, good. Thanks, to Councillor Levy, and, and and I'm sure at this point now that uh, that uh, David and 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 Dylan have a lot of material to work with, uh, with the comments that have been brought forward this evening by members of council, as to their questions and concerns. So, David, perhaps with that, uh, could you uh, do away with the shared screen? Yeah, absolutely, um, Your Worship. Uh, we can just. Final finish off then on um, just next steps and perhaps what I'll do actually I think it may be better for Andrea just to summarize the next steps than myself and then we can um, end the night so thank you everybody for um, all of your input I mean it's 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 it's, it's very it's a very passionate evolving um, study on a very important piece of land so okay. I'll, I'll just Turn it over to Andrea. Okay, Andrea, if you uh, will. Yeah, thanks, uh, uh, Mayor LaRue. So um, we recognize that the July and August uh, may not be ideal times for moving too much forward. And we also realized that um, there was some feedback that we need to do a little bit more consultation, that there were some out there that hadn't, hadn't heard the study, especially from the boating community. I mean, I think that's just because of the season that we were doing the most of the work in. Um, so we're going to do some some consultation over the, the July and August months and come back in September. Uh, the planning and community development department is going to continue on with our parking counts just to help us uh, flush out some of, of what's happening with parking on, on this in the downtown and at the town dock. Um, and we're also going to see what else we can do about further research around parking needs and marina and boat launch needs. So this will bring us back uh, to council uh, in the fall of 2021 where we're going to bring back and restart the master plan with you guys. Um, and uh, in the meantime, too, the technical advisory committee, we're going to meet with them and just see uh, where they want to take us from here, too. So um, generally, it's a, it's a bit of a pause over the summer months to, to follow back up in the fall of 2020. But in the meantime, I know uh, the Jackies uh, will be working uh, on this as well and, and tweaking the, the drawings that we've been talking about tonight. Okay, thank you, Andrea. Um, and with that, we are going to move on to F, which is the conclusion next steps. And with that is going to require a motion. So conclusion, the next steps is that the town dock draft secondary and master plan be updated as directed during the council workshop. And that staff be directed to bring forward the updated draft secondary and master plan for further community engagement and opportunities for public feedback on the documents and designs in the fall of 2021. So with that, could I have a mover and a seconder, please? Councillor Levy moves, seconder. Uh, Deputy Mayor, uh, thank you. All in favor? Yes, okay, then that carries. Uh, Councillor Cummings, did you have a comment or question or concern that you wanted to bring I forward? did, Your Worship. Um, Andrea, is it possible um, I would like to find out who's using our launch ramps. Is it possible to get postal codes when people pay their fees? Let's find out just who's using that launch ramp. I guess, Andrea, that's something you'd have to bring forward to uh, Sherry, I guess. Yeah, I think we, we can take that back internally and see if there's anything we can do. I know I've been paying a lot more attention down to the town dock and, and Jerry did provide some details uh, to us around who's using it from a marina perspective, but not so much the launch one. So, oh, Sher great. Sherry's with, Sherry's with Sherry's us. Sherry's turned it on. <laughs> Sherry, what, do, can you uh, make a comment on Councillor Cummings' uh, request? Sure. Uh, I've been the quiet little church mouse here at the meeting, uh, sitting in the background. Um, certainly we can uh, look operationally to see if there's something that we could do 
at the kiosk to collect um, some information. We do understand who uh, our slip renters are, uh, but not completely uh, the who's using the boat launch. So we can collect a little more information that way, I'm thinking. Good. I'll answer your question, Councillor Cummings. Yeah, it does. If we just get postal code even, we know we can go from there where okay. everybody's coming from. So I did have a mover and a seconder on the motion. Uh, all in favor? Uh, okay, and that is carried. Uh, then we have a question period from media and the public. I don't know if we have any of the one there that has any questions. Uh, doesn't appear to. So with that, uh, fellow councillors and uh, David and Dylan, uh, we uh, thank you very much for your patience and your, uh, your input on this whole process. It's been very enlightening, very interesting. And I'm sure, as I mentioned, that we're giving David and Dylan a lot of uh, feedback to work with and come back to us with in the fall. Uh, so with that, other than saying good night, is that uh, we'll see you all at 7 p.m. tomorrow evening. So with that, we are adjourned. Thank you. Dan's got a bad look on his face. <laughs> the arena study, Dan. <laughs> well, they always schedule it on the night when I have an airport commission meeting tomorrow night. So oh. <laughs> it's going to be a little